This is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. And that is driven high in the air to left, and that is going to be a bat-flipping grand slam. Live play-by-play coverage of BYU Baseball is brought to you by doTERRA. doTERRA, proud sponsor of the BYU Baseball team. Now let's get you ready for Cougar Baseball. Here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Good evening, Cougar baseball fans. And after exactly two weeks away, welcome back inside Larry H. Miller Field on the BYU campus in Provo, Utah. As tonight, the BYU Cougars complete a two-game series with the Dixie State Trailblazers by playing for a sixth straight win overall. A win tonight here at home would tie the Cougars' season-long win streak. Let's pause at this moment for the remainder of our national anthem. First pitch just a few moments away, so let's get right to our leadoff interview with BYU head coach Trent Pratt, presented by doTERRA. doTERRA, pursue what's pure. And tonight, Coach Pratt talks about the approach he and his team will take in playing an in-state midweek game after a strong week in Southern California. The Cougs went 4-0 last week and have won five straight, but now it's Dixie State, a team that beat BYU a month ago down in St. George. Yeah, we just got to be ready. I think we just we left a lot of guys in base. Remember that game? We had a lot of hits and just didn't get a couple of big hits. So hopefully we can kind of just carry what we've been doing the last you know five games and and be able to get a big hit and score some runs tonight. That game showed you can out hit a team, you can out homer a team. It's all about timeliness. Yeah, got to get big hits. You know, I think we hit solo home runs instead of three run home runs. So yeah, it's about getting hits. You know, in big situations with the guys on base and then going out and you know and be able to get shut shut them down and, and keep them from scoring. How do you plan to throw this one tonight? Kind of we did last Tuesday. Um, we'll start Aiden Callahan and he'll go one or two and then kind of piece it together after that and hopefully you know we throw a bunch of strikes and make some plays. He looked really good at Fullerton, but you wanted to save him for the weekend, which you did. Same plan tonight? Yeah, same plan. Um, we'll give him one or two and, and he'll keep his pitch count down because he's been really good for us out of the bullpen on the weekend, so we want to make sure that he's fresh and ready to go this weekend. Any other lineup notes you want to talk about? Yeah, we're just going to give a couple guys a rest tonight with Cole Gamble with his foot, so um, we'll DH Rogers tonight and, and just give Carl Ruder, Ruder a little break. He's been catching a lot, and, and so we'll give Chase Peterson a chance back there tonight. And I mean, we have a lot of confidence in those guys who are going to get the job done. You haven't won six games in a row since early in the season, February and March. You've won five in a row right now, so you're in that same vicinity. The old cliche about peaking at the right time is kind of referring to this team right now? Oh, we hope so, but man, each day is a new day, too. Mm-hmm. So we're just trying to take it one day at a time and and hopefully that's the case that we kind of just keep this train moving a little bit and keep playing good baseball. How much of that is discussed with your guys about not taking anything for granted? Yes, we're playing well, but any team on any night can be the one that gets you. We've been talking about it a lot. Um, every After the first game of Pepper 9, after the second game of Pepper 9, and then again yesterday saying, hey, just because we won four or five in a row doesn't mean that we're, we've, we've really proved anything. we got to go out and play today because the only game that matters is today, and the only pitch that matters is really the next pitch. And so we're trying to talk about that a lot and just keep guys focused and, and just play one pitch at a time. You have to go out and put at-bats and in innings together still, but is it kind of nice knowing you've got your last eight games here at home? Yeah, it's been, it feels like we've been gone a long time, so it is nice knowing that we're at home and and guys are comfortable and hopefully that you know we play good at home. Hopefully that carries on the next couple weeks. All right, Trent, good luck on this one tonight. We'll talk to you post-game. Good, thanks, Greg. All right, that is BYU head coach Trent Pratt. Time now for tonight's starting lineups, courtesy of Big O Tires. Your local Big O Tires has financing available. Big O Tires, the team you trust. We'll start with the visitors, the Trailblazers of Dixie State, leading off and playing center field number four, Jagan Levitt. 
Hitting second, left fielder number 11, Jack Walker. Hitting third, the catcher number 27, Caden Hollow. Hitting cleanup, the DH number 44, Will Chambers. Hitting fifth, the second baseman number 24, Tyler Hollow. Hitting sixth, right fielder number 46, Tyson Fisher. Hitting seventh, the first baseman number 33, Sean Keating. Hitting eighth, the third baseman number 28, Matthew Ivansich. And hitting ninth, the shortstop number two, Ethan He. Starting pitcher for BYU is Aiden Callahan. And with the first pitch, he gets this one underway, delivering low. Fastball low at 91 for ball one. Aiden Callahan, 2-0 and with a 1.98 ERA. Making his second start. His first came one week ago tonight at Cal State Fullerton. That's called strike. Kneecaps outside for one and one. Dixie State starting pitcher, number six, Karsten Herman, making his first start. Only three and a third innings pitched on the year for the left-hander Herman. Callahan kicks and fires. That's a chopper right to Aiden. He'll underhand scoop it to Jacob Wilkin. That's one gone for Dixie State. BYU batting order leading off and playing second base, number five, Ozzie Pratt, hitting second. The shortstop, number two, Brock Watkins, hitting third. The center fielder, number six, Mitch McIntyre, hitting cleanup. The right fielder, number 27, Ryan Sapiti, hitting fifth. Third baseman, number 25, Austin Deming, hitting sixth. The first baseman, the aforementioned number 35, Jacob Wilk, hitting seventh. Left fielder, number 17, Joshua Cowden, hitting eighth. The DH, number 16, Jacob Rogers, and hitting ninth, the catcher, Making his second start of the season, number 29, Chase Peterson, as Jack Walker takes strike one from Callahan. The 0-1 to Walker, Dixie State's left fielder. One gone here in the top of the first. Aiden kicks and fires. That's fouled off home plate, and 0-2 the count to Walker. Walker was the right fielder a month ago down in St. George. A game that Dixie State won by a score of 7-5. to five. So from right field a month ago to left field tonight for Jack Walker. And that's lined right at Austin Deming. Taking a knee and watching it into his glove for out number two. So Levitt grounding out 1-3. And Walker lining out to Austin Deming at third base. Two gone for the catcher, Caden Hollow. Lefty bat, Levitt bats lefty. At the top of the order, hitting third hollow left-handed bat. Brother Tyler Hollow in the five spot, also lefty. And Sean Keating, the first baseman, another left-handed bat for head coach Chris Fadenauer. Switch hitter Will Chambers can go either or out of the five hole. That's a swing and a miss from Caden Hollow for strike one. Two gone top of the first. Aiden Callahan winds up and delivers. Slow one outside for ball one. The count even at one and one. And catching is Chase Peterson. His first and only start came back on March. I make it uh, February 19th against Marshall. So two and a half months ago, opening weekend for BYU. Colin Ruder getting a rest behind the plate tonight. So Chase Peterson steps in and crouches down. And awaits the 2-1 from battery mate Aiden Callahan. Two balls and a strike. Two out, no one on here top of the first. And that's a grounder handled by Watkins, who throws to Jacob Wilk. For out number three, Watkins coming over from a shortstop position to the second base side of the diamond. And instead of having Ozzie go backhand, Brock took it on the forehand and goes 6-3 for out number three. For Dixie State, no runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on. We go bottom one. Cougs get their first at-bat next here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball. Now back to the ballpark and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Scoreless into the bottom of the first inning. Leading off for BYU will be Ozzie Pratt. Followed by Brock Watkins and Mitch McIntyre. The now familiar top three in the batting order. And you can add cleanup hitter Ryan Sapiti to a regular rotation at the top for BYU. Ozzie Pratt will hit and face Carson Herman. Herman making his first start, first career start. A pretty robust 13.50 ERA in three and a third innings pitched. If Herman gets out of the first, it'll be the first time he's pitched a complete inning this season. All of his appearances, two-thirds of an inning or less. 
And the left-hander hits Ozzie Pratt with his first pitch of the night. So Ozzie Pratt is aboard with an HBP, an inauspicious first start, first pitch for Karsten Herman. So Southpaw on the mound, Herman facing Brock Watkins. Watkins with a man on and no one out here in the bottom of the first. Karsten Herman, six foot 180 pound freshman. Out of Snow Canyon High School, down in the land of Dixie. He'll be lifted in the air into the right field corner. And off the top of the fence padding surrounding the Dixie State bullpen for strike one. So a long foul by Brock. Pleasant Grove's own. Brock Watkins with multiple hits in seven of his last 13 games. Brock coming in hitting 287. And up a smidge to 291 with runners aboard. And he has a teammate aboard. And Ozzie Pratt leading off the game with an HBP. Herman comes set. Lefty kicks and fires. That's low. Off speed. Way off speed at 69 miles per hour. One ball, one strike to Brock. BYU in the royal blue jerseys, white pants, royal and navy caps. The word Cougars across the chest. And that's again lined foul down the first baseline. One ball and two strikes to Watkins. Dixie State in red and navy caps. Red jerseys, gray pants, and the word Trailblazers across the chest. Dixie State will become Utah Tech later this year. In just a couple of months' time, as a matter of fact. One ball, two strikes from Herman to Watkins. That's outside for ball two. Count even at two and two. Home plate umpire Michael Goebel tonight. Jeff Clough at first. Mike Jarbo at second. And Dax Upton at third. That's your crew of arbiters on this cool early May night. The 2 2. Off speed foul tip strikeout as Brock Watkins is retired on the forward K. And one out with Mitch McIntyre now hitting. With one aboard and one gone at 0-0, bottom of the first, BYU and Dixie State. Ozzie Pratt with a left-handed bat to lead things off. Brock Watkins hitting righty, and now another lefty bat in Mitch McIntyre. Josh Cowden in the seven hole and Chase Peterson in the nine hole. Left-handed bats as well for head coach Trent Pratt. Ozzie Pratt takes off. And he is caught stealing. Great throw from Caden Hollow. And the swipe made, erasing Ozzie Pratt from the base pass. And so two gone for BYU. As Pratt is caught stealing, and the base is now clear for Mitch McIntyre. That's 0-1 to McIntyre. 1-1 one one to count even now. That's the 15th uh, base stealer thrown out by Caden Hollow this year. A 1-1. And Mitch McIntyre laces it to straightaway center. And over the head of the center fielder, Levitt, Mitch McIntyre will hold at second with his team leading 14th double of the year. So Mitch McIntyre with a two-out double, which would have certainly scored Ozzie Pratt had Pratt not been gunned out at second moments ago trying to steal. So we're still scoreless. Two out and a runner on second for BYU's RBI leader, Ryan Sapiti. Ozzie Pratt, by the way, now four for six on his bag swipes on the year. A perfect throw from Caden Hollow to Ethan He, the shortstop, to get Pratt at second moments ago. And that's a called strike. Just outside, paint job on the away edge. 
No balls on the strike. Two out, one on. The one on is McIntyre at second with a two-out double. Karsten Herman delivers again outside. Herman's long outing on the year, two-thirds of an inning, and he's thrown exactly two-thirds of an inning. He's two outs here in the bottom of the first. On a staff day for both teams, a five-game week for Dixie State. The 1-1. It's outside for two balls and a strike. Dixie State went one, two, three in the top of the first. Ground out, line out, and ground out. And here in the bottom of the first, it's two out and one on for BYU. Mitch McIntyre at second, Ryan Sapiti in the batter's box, the right-handed hitting Sapiti. And Herman delivers low for three balls and a strike. Off speed from Herman. And Sapiti on a nine-game reached base streak. There's a ball away from taking a base. 3-1. Lefty on the hill, right-handed bat in the box in Sapiti. Kick and fire, and that will be a five-pitch base on balls. Ryan Sapiti's reached base streak now goes to double digits, goes to ten games. And now it's first and second for Austin Deming. The current WCC Player of the Week, Austin Deming, on a six-game hit streak. And during his six-game hit streak, he's hitting 458. And Deming is now BYU's batting average leader at 312 on the season. Another ball delivered from Herman. Low at 84. One ball, no strikes, two out, two on. Runner in scoring position for Deming. Austin hitting 229 with runners in scoring position on the year. Karsten Herman, the freshman southpaw on the hill, glancing back at second. Winds up and breaking ball settles in for strike one. One ball, one strike. That was a slow bender to even the count. Austin Deming, in addition to a six-game hit streak, has a seven-game reach base streak going. We saw Sapiti's reach streak reach 10 moments ago. 1-1. One, one. Two out, two on. Stepping off is Herman. It's the red and the blue here at Miller Park tonight. The red jerseys of Dixie, the royal blue shirts of BYU. That's a paint job on the outside edge as Austin Deming will step out and consider his approach with a 1-2 count. So Karsten Herman is a strike or any out here of making it his longest outing of the season with a complete inning. One ball, two strikes, two out, two on. Scoreless game bottom one here in Provo. Herman kicks and fires and a swinging strikeout. And for the first time this year, Herman has gone an inning. And we go to the top of the second inning for BYU in the first. No runs on a hit. There were no errors. There were two left on. Top of the second coming up next, BYU 0, Dixie State 0 on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Top of the second here at Miller Park. BYU and Dixie State scoreless through one. Will Chambers, the Trailblazers DH, will lead off the second. The switch hitting Chambers will go lefty against the righty Aiden Callahan, who kicks and fires and low for ball one on the 90 mile per hour fastball from Aiden. Aiden four pitch mix, fastball cutter, change in curve. Fastball will get to the low 90s, the 1 0. That's low and inside. Fastball again for two balls and no strikes to Will Chambers. Chambers hitting 273 on the year, but 429 is leadoff. A swing and a miss from Chambers on the 89 mile per hour offering. Two balls on the strike to the DH, who did not play against BYU last month down in St. George. That game was April 5th, the 2 1. Called strike. On the low part of the zone, 
at 90. And the count's now even. So from 2-0 oh, to 2-2 two and two to Chambers. Aiden Callahan winds up and delivers. And that is a swing and a miss. Three straight strikes thrown by Callahan. And on top of that one was Chambers, who has a word with the next man into the box, Tyler Hollow. And Callahan's got the Kooks first out here in the top of the second. And Aiden's got his first strikeout of the day. The script calls for Callahan to just go two innings. He's into his second. Has thrown 20 out of 15 pitches. Called strike to Tyler Hollow, brother of Caden. Tyler, the older of the two Hollow brothers. Tyler at second base, Caden at catcher. And that's a bloop to short center. And Mitch McIntyre is going to have to back off and let it drop for the first hit of the day for Dixie State. Tyler Hollow with a one-out bloop to center. And it's one on with one out for the Trailblazers. Tyson Fisher, the right fielder, now will now hit. Four of the first five batsmen for Dixie State. Left-handed hitters. Now for the right side, Tyson Fisher. Fisher also a DNP against BYU last month. Hollow at first. One out here in the top of the second. Callahan from the stretch. That's high and inside. Breaker stayed high for ball one. Tyler Hollow, one out single to center. Tyson Fisher awaits the 1-0. Setting up outside is Peterson. Ball two is delivered, and Peterson tries to back pick at first. And diving back safely is Hollow. Two balls and no strikes to Tyson Fisher. Making his 37th start in right field in this, the Trailblazers' 47th game of the season. One out, one on. Top two in a scoreless game. And that is lined just foul down the left field line. One ball, two strikes. Scoreboard shows two and one. It's one and two. There we go. One and two to Tyson Fisher. Aiden from the stretch. And that is a second strike out of the inning. Waving on a pitch low and outside was Tyson Fisher. For strikeout number two, both of the swinging variety. And it's two out, one on for Dixie State here in the top of the second. Sean Keating, another player who did not play in the BYU game last month, was dealing with an injured thumb or hand at the time. First baseman getting his 20th start on the first base bag here tonight. And is hitting it well. Hits in five of his last six coming in two tonight. Keating hitting 282 on the year. That number drops to, uh, to 211 with runners aboard. And he's got Tyler Hollow at first base with two gone. BYU 0, Dixie State 0. Top two here at Larry H. Miller Field. I spot BYU AD Tom Holmo settling into his seat on a night that has uh, softball starting at the top of the hour. Baseball softball combo complex busy tonight. The 1 0 to Keating. And that's foul back out of play. Counts even at 1 and 1. Aiden Callahan making his second start of the year. The first came just last week in the Fullerton win. 13 and 2 thirds innings pitched coming in two tonight. 2-0 oh with a 1.98 ERA to begin the day. The 1-1, one one, the throw over to Wilk is low as Tyler Hollow scrambles back. Oh 
Tonight's game, one of eight non-conference WCC games on the agenda. One ball, one strike, two out, one on. That's high and outside for ball two. Fastball high at 89. Softball taking on Utah State here in a half hour. Throw back over to first. And back safely is hollow. Two gone for the Trailblazers here in the top of the second and both outs via the strikeout. As Aiden Callahan is scripted to be finishing up his night here in the second inning. The 2-1. That's foul tip strike. Evens the count at 2-2. Two and two. Matthew Ivansich is on deck. Will he be hitting or leading off the next inning? Sean Keating in the box facing Callahan. Aiden's thrown 25 pitches. Through 20 in two innings last week at Fullerton. That's a grounder to Ozzie Pratt, ranging over to his left. We'll get it over to Jacob Wilk at first. And on the 4-3 ground out, BYU's out of the top of the second for Dixie State. No runs on a hit. There were no errors. A runner was left down. We go bottom two, 0-0. Cougs and Trailblazers on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball. Now back to the ballpark and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. BYU Athletics would like to recognize Residence Inn for being tonight's game sponsor and thank them for being an important part of our team. Residence Inn by Marriott Provo North. It's not a room, it's a residence. Bottom of the second, Jacob Wilk, BYU first baseman, leads things off for the Cougs. Jacob was under the weather last week in Southern California. Did not start any of the games and came in as a defensive replacement near the end of the week. And takes two straight balls from Karsten Herman. So Jacob's last start was April 30th at San Francisco. When he had a grand slam and six RBI in that game. Then he got sick and didn't make any starts in either the Fullerton or uh, Pepperdine games last week. And fouls away strike one. Karsten Herman, whose long outing was two-thirds of an inning coming in two tonight, is now into his second inning of work. The lefty starter for Dixie State has thrown 22 pitches. Gets Wilkes uh, lifted up into foul territory. Down the first baseline and into the Trailblazers bullpen. 2-2 two and two to Wilk. From 2-0 and oh to 2-2, two and two, he's BYU's slugging percentage. And home runs leader. Six dingers on the year. His last one being that grand slam. And a big win at USF to salvage one in that series 10 days ago. He and Colin Reuter, six homers apiece. The 2-2 from Herman to Wilk. And that'll be high and outside for ball three. The count is full. That pitch outside of the zone, the 3-2 speed and low and Jacob Wilk will take his base so BYU's gotten the lead batter aboard in both the first and the second innings Ozzie Pratt was hit by a pitch but was caught stealing in the first Mitch McIntyre would later in the inning double and would have doubled home Pratt but for Pratt's erasure at second base so Jacob Wilk now reaches with the base on balls the second base on balls issued by Karsten Herman. He also has that hit batsman. As four batters have reached. McIntyre will take around the kneecaps. I beg your pardon. Cowden will take around the kneecaps for strike one. Josh Cowden out of the seven hole hitting left-handed. Wilk on first. And Josh Cowden hitting 277. Digs in to await the 0-1. Low and away. Ball one. Josh 
Josh Cowden swinging it well. Hits in five of his last six games. The 1-1. Wilkes takes his lead at first. Herman kicks and fires. And that'll be a base hit through the right side. Right fielder Fisher will handle. Keep Wilk at second, and it's first and second. No one out. BYU's got something going here in the bottom of the second inning. So Josh Cowden extends his reached base streak to seven games. It's a no-out single to right, and Jacob Wilk goes to second. So Wilk on second, Cowden on first, and a mound conference between catcher Caden Hollow and freshman hurler Karsten Herman with Jacob Rogers stepping in. Rogers making his fifth consecutive start and is a fifth start of the year as the designated hitter. Hits out of the eight hole with Chase Peterson on deck. Chase Peterson looking for his first hit as a BYU Cougar. Likely get his first crack tonight here in the bottom of the second. No one out and first and second for BYU in a scoreless game. And Herman fires fastball low for ball one. BYU and Dixie State playing for a fourth time since the Trailblazers went to Division I. And Dixie's won two of the three meetings, both down in St. George last year and this year. Dixie won 7-5 back on April 5th. That's laced to center field right at the center fielder, Jagan Levitt. He'll make the catch for the first out, and the runners will hold. Chase Peterson now bats with one out and two on. Chase Peterson getting his second start at catcher this year. As noted a short time ago, his first start came on the opening weekend for BYU. Back on February 19th as part of a doubleheader against Marshall. He did get two at-bats in the Dixie game last month, went 0 for 2. And he's 0 for 11. In his BYU career, so still looking for her first hit, hit number one, and be a nice time for her right now. Could bring in a run here. That ball's in the dirt, low and away. Blocked by Hollow. One ball, no strikes to Peterson. Chase Peterson, the six foot one, 185 pound junior from McKinney, Texas, and a transfer from Salt Lake Community College. Left-handed hitting, Chase Peterson against lefty Karsten Herman. Herman again puts it in the dirt and again blocked by Hollow. Two balls, no strikes. Herman's thrown 31 pitches. Has given up two hits in one and a third. Has struck out two, walked two, and hit a batsman. We're 0 0, bottom two, but BYU as first and second, no one out. Make it pardon one out for Chase Peterson. That's a kneecap strike. Just touching the bottom edge of the zone. 84 mile per hour strike to get Herman back in the count. Two balls and a strike. Peterson settles into his stance and will take low for ball three. Herman a tougher time finding the zone as his evening goes along. He's on his season high pitch count as well. His previous high was a modest 22 pitches. And he's into his 30s now as he kicks and fires. Well, he fouled off home plate. Count will leave it at three and two with one out. BYU catcher Chase Peterson, the nine-hole hitter, meaning Ozzie Pratt is on deck. Ozzie led the game off by being hit with a pitch on the game's first pitch. But then was then caught stealing. Caden Hollow throwing out his 15th would-be stealer of the year, the 3-2. 
That's hit in the air to center field. Center fielder Levitt going back and to the track and making the catch just shy of the track. Tagging from second to third is Wilk. He'll get there standing up. And so Chase Peterson advances a runner on the fly out to center field. Back-to-back flyouts to the center fielder, Jagan Levitt. Two gone and two on for Ozzie Pratt, top of the order. Catcher Caden Hollow has his face mask up and is looking toward the dugout. We'll now get signals set with pitcher and infielders. With Ozzie Pratt digging in. With an empty count and two out and two on. Jacob Wilk reached on the base on balls and then Cowden followed with a single. Since then, back-to-back flyouts to center, putting runners on the corners for Pratt. The left-handed bat of Ozzie Pratt once again spiked. Ball one to Ozzie. The freshman from Oxford, Mississippi, home of Ole Miss. Magnolia Heights High School, which also produces his teammate Colin Reuter. Getting a rest is Reuter, BYU's regular catcher. The 1-0. Low and away from ball two. Herman, whose previous high pitch count was 22, is about to throw his 40th pitch of this night. Staff night for both teams. And the Cougs have pitchers warming with Aiden Callahan scripted to go two, and he's gone two. That's a high outside called strike at 84 miles per hour. Puts Herman back in the count at two and one. Carter Foss, the right-hander, is warming in the pen. For BYU, the 2-1. Pitch away for ball three, off speed. Three balls and a strike to Ozzie Pratt. Brock Watkins on deck. BYU's never lost a home game to Dixie State. The 3-1. It's chopped foul. Three balls, two strikes, two out, and runners on the corners. Of the 13 games played all time between BYU and Dixie, 10 were in the pre-Division I days for Dixie. BYU went 10-0 in those games and has gone 1-2 against the Trailblazers since they've gone D1. Including all those olden time games, BYU 8-0 all time against Dixie at home. And a high pitch is ball four. Cowden will go to second. And Ozzie Pratt now reaching to load the bases for Brock Watkins. So Karsten Herman has now issued three bases on balls, along with a hit pitch, a hit by, by rather a hit by pitch, and has given up two hits. And the visit to the mound will end, end the night for Karsten Herman. So Herman will go through one and two thirds, and will take a 60 second break for a Dixie State pitching change on the new skin BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Pitching change for Dixie State from Southpaw to Southpaw go the Trailblazers. Karsten Herman replaced by Ben Hart. Hart making his 22nd appearance of the year. One of his preceding 21 was against BYU. Ben Hart pitched an inning. He pitched the uh, seventh inning. Down in Dixie, gave up a single hit, no runs, struck out one, and threw 14 pitches in a pretty economical outing. In Dixie State's 7-5 home win over BYU back on April 5th. So Ben Hart making appearance number 22. He's pitched 28 innings on the year, giving up 38 hits, 19 runs, all of them earned. And his stri- at nearly 3-1 to one strikeout to walk ratio at 32 Ks to 11 bases on balls. His ERA is 6.11. Dixie State's team ERA is a very robust 6.63. And the hitters are batting 326 against the Trailblazers as a team. So Dixie hits it well. 294 is the team batting average on the year, but they give up 326. BYU more modest on both counts. Cougars hitting 263 coming into tonight, giving up 247. 
And the Cougs' team ERA is more than three runs per game better than their brethren from St. George. So Ben Hart will face Brock Watkins with the bases loaded in a scoreless game. All the runners belong to Herman as Watkins takes ball one. Brock on the year, two for eight with the sacks stacked. BYU as a team, 355 with the bases loaded. The count goes to one and one on the strike to Brock. One ball, one strike, two out, and bases loaded for BYU here in the bottom of the second of a scoreless game. A Wilk walk, a Cowden single, and a Pratt walk accounting for the three runners aboard. One ball, one strike, two, Brock Watkins. A 286 average on the year for Brock. Right-handed bat of Watkins takes inside for ball two. Two and one to Watkins. BYU's runs and hits and total bases leader. 0 for 1 with a swinging strikeout in the first. Wilk is on third, Cowden on second, Pratt on first. The 2-1, two, 2 out and bases loaded. And that's a chopper to third base. It's fair ball handled by the third baseman Ivan Situ steps on the bag and records the third out of the inning. So BYU leaves the bases loaded for the Cougs. No runs on a hit. There were no errors. And three were left on. We go top three. BYU and Dixie State 0-0 on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball. Now back to the ballpark and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. PZ Printing Pitching Change for BYU brought to you by PZ Printing. Nothing inspires like print. And after two strong innings by Aiden Callahan, his scripted departure leads to an entrance of Carter Foss. Carter making his sixth appearance of the year. He's pitched four complete innings on the season. Nine hits, five runs, all of them earned. Has struck out three, walked two. His ERA is 11.25 in limited work. First batter he will face here in the top of the third is Matthew Ivansich, who grounds it to Deming. Deming will gun it to first, and the 5-3 ground out makes it one out for Dixie here at the top of the third. So Ivansich, the Dixie State third baseman, grounding out to his positional counterpart, and it's one gone here in the top of the third. Ethan He. Like Ivansich, batting right-handed to face the right Foss, right-hander Foss. And Carter delivers around the kneecaps. Fastball at 91. Just inside, low and inside, but on the black for strike one. High for ball one. Carter Foss, four pitch mix. Fastball curve slider change. The 1 1. And that's going to get down the gap in right center. It'll get to the wall. A slow rolling extra base hit. And a two-bagger for Ethan He out of the nine hole. So He hammers one to the gap in right center and finds himself at second base. Ethan He with his th- uh, fifth double. So it was 11 hits. Five have been for extra bases. And a one-out double for He puts the runner in scoring position for the top of the order. Jagan Levitt hitting left-handed to face the righty Carter Foss. For Dixie State, hit number two. Both teams scoreless on two hits. Carter Foss with a runner on second. Kicks and fires. And that check swing is called a strike on appeal to the third base umpire, Dax Upton. So no balls and a strike to Levitt, who grounded out 1-3 to open the game. Ethan He on second. Levitt batting 250 with a runner in score with a runners in scoring position. He's got one runner in Ethan He with a one-out double. The throw to second, covering is Watkins. Tapping on the helmet of He, but He is back safely. 
No balls and a strike. One out, one on. Top of the third here at Miller Park. BYU and Dixie State. Cougars coming in 27 and 18. The Trailblazers 18 and 28. 8 and 17 in away games are the Trailblazers. BYU 9 and 5 at home. The 0 1 from Foss to Levitt. That's a taken strike for 0 and 2. Carter from the stretch. Foss comes set, glancing back at second. Comes Plateward, and that's a reach out slow roller to Watkins. The shortstop will handle, gun to Wilk at first. The runner on second will hold, and that's two gone as Levitt is retired on the 6-3 ground out. And so now it's two out and one on for Jack Walker, who lined out to Austin Deming in the first inning. So two gone, one on for Dixie State in the scoreless game. BYU zero runs on two hits. Dixie State zero runs on two hits. Cooks left the bases loaded in the second. Ethan He is on second. Carter Foss has replaced Aiden Callahan on the hill. Foss kicks and fires to the right-handed hitting Jack Walker. And ball one. Carter Foss will give you a fastball, high 80s, low 90s. Curve in the high 70s. Slider in the high 70s to low 80s. And a change up in the same general vicinity. The 1-0. That curve drops in for strike one. Bender evens the count. One ball, one strike to Walker. Fourth in batting average on this team coming in two tonight. He's sitting 305 on the year. Singles hitter. 14 of his 18 hits on the year are singles. The 1-1. From Foss to Walker. Two gone. He'll step off. Galloping back is he, but no one covering for BYU. Staff day for both teams, so a lot of arms will be used. And both teams already into their second pitchers here in the third inning. The 1-1. That's outside. The ball two. Fastball away at 92 from Foss. Two balls and a strike to the Trailblazers left fielder. Last month at Bruce Hurst Field, Walker went one for three. Well, the run scored, an RBI and a walk. He's 0 for 1 tonight. The 2-1. Well, again, look back at second base one time and two. That's a grounder to Watkins. It's short. He'll shuffle step, throw to Jacob Wilk, and that'll be it for Dixie State in the top of the third inning. So for the Trailblazers, no runs on a hit. There were no errors, and one was left on. We go bottom three. Cougs and Trailblazers still scoreless here in Provo on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Well, BYU's recorded nine at Dixie State outs, and none of them in the outfield. It's been six ground outs, one line out, and two strikeouts. Brock Watkins has been busy. Three six threes so far. Ball one to Mitch McIntyre leading off the bottom of the third. Ben Hart remains on the hill for Dixie State. Second pitcher used and both lefties. Karsten Herman and now Ben Hart. Left-handed hitting Mitch McIntyre. Awaits the 1-0. Hmm. Getting the call on a pitch that looked outside. It's Ben Hart. Strike one, one and one to McIntyre. Oh, 
That smacks the leather low and away for ball two. Mitch McIntyre with a two-out double in the first inning. He was stranded. Cougs have left five on already. That's away for ball three. BYU left 10 runners on in the game. They lost 7-5 to five down at Dixie last month. It was a very unusual game in how the Cougars lost that one. More on that as we go along. 3-1 to Mitch. That's called strike. So the 3-1 take. And that's heart of the zone. That's an appetizing pitch that McIntyre laid off to fill the count at 3-2. and two. Ben Hart working third base side of the rubber. Mitch McIntyre waves the bat over his left shoulder, takes a hack. That'll be slicing foul down the left field line beyond the BYU bullpen. BYU bullpen for the moment is quiet. It's well staffed, but no one throwing right now. Carter Foss has replaced Aiden Callahan. Through Callahan's two scripted innings, in came Foss and has pitched a single inning. Ben Hart, after Herman went one and two-thirds, is on the hill. That's a slow grounder to second. It will not be a throw. It'll be an infield hit for Mitch McIntyre. Ranging over to his right was Tyler Hollow, and I think he was not even going to make a throw as the ball slipped out of his hand. Such a slow roller up the middle. And I think Hollow, yeah. As Hollow settled to throw, the ball slipped out, but I think even had he thrown it, there was no chance to catch McIntyre. That should be a, an infield single. It is. So McIntyre is now two for two with a double and a single. This is a leadoff single, and in each of the first three innings, BYU's gotten the lead batter aboard. But the lead batter aboard in two consecutive innings, and neither has scored in this scoreless game. Ryan Sapiti will now hit with McIntyre on first. And Sapiti will stake. It'll take a strike one. Ben Hart, the southpaw on the hill for Dixie State. The 0-1 to Sapiti. That's high and outside. Ben Hart, four-pitch mix. Fastball, curve, slider, change. His fastball will touch 90. The 1-1. That's a two-hopper to the shortstop. Underhand scoop to second for one. A throw on to first for two. And it is a 6-4-3 DP. Double play erases McIntyre on the base paths and Sapiti at first. And now it's two out for Austin Deming, and the base is clear. So Sapiti is now 0 for 1. Base on balls in the first and hitting into a 6-4-3 here in the third. Austin Deming now hits with two out. No one on. He struck out swinging in the first. And we'll take ball one from Ben Hart. Hart's curve will be low 70s. Slider high 70s to 80. And the change in the same neighborhood. And that'll be a grounder up the middle. Diving is the shortstop. He and Ethan He cannot haul it in. And it'll be a single up the middle. A two-out empty bases single for Austin Deming, whose hit streak is now seven games and reached base streak is now eight games. So two out, one on for BYU as Deming is aboard. For BYU hit number four. And still no runs on the night. BYU no runs on four hits. Dixie State no runs on two hits. Jacob Wilk who had a solo home run in the Dixie State loss last month. We'll dig in with Deming on first. Jacob Wilk hitting 245 with runners aboard, 289 on the year overall. And we'll take strike one after thinking about giving it a swing. He lays off the off-speed offering and 0-1 from Hart to Wilk.
right-handed hitting Jacob Wilk was opposite field, but well foul. Slicing out of the venue down the first baseline. Ben Hart gets ahead of J uh, Jacob Wilk 0 2. Josh Cowden is on deck. Wilk in the second inning walked, advanced on a single by Cowden. And then a base on balls to Pratt, but was stranded at third. And that will be an opposite field. Slicer on the ground through the right side. It's another two-out hit for BYU. Back-to-back -back singles by Deming and now Wilk. And it'll be two on for Josh Cowden with two out here in the bottom of the third inning. So Deming to second. Wilk on first. And Cowden, who singled and was stranded at second in the second. Bats now in the third in a scoreless game. That's BYU's fifth hit. The Cougars out hit Dixie State 13 to nine in St. George last month and lost seven to five. That's a taken strike around the knees. Off speed at 79 from Ben Hart and 0-1 to Cowden. Josh Cowden's reached base streak went to seven games with that single in the second inning. He now has hits in seven of his last nine games. BYU left fielder Josh Cowden hitting lefty against the lefty Ben Hart. Two out, two on. That ball goes through the legs of the catcher. The wild pitch goes to the backstop, and runners will advance a base. Deming to third and Wilk to second. Wild pitcher pass ball. Got to think it's wild, even though it went through the catcher's legs. That was not going to be an easy ball to handle from Hart. So it puts two runners in scoring position now for Josh Cowden. Josh's wrist number is 160. A far cry from his overall average of 286 on the year. One ball, one strike, two out, two on. Two runners in scoring position in a scoreless game. Ben Hart on the hill. Lefty v. Lefty. The 1-1 to Cowden. The kick and fire. And that's a take for strike two. That's a fastball in the heart for one and two. We're scoreless into the bottom of the third here at Larry H. Miller Field. A cool night. It has become overcast. Sixty-two degrees. Slight breeze out to center, right center. The one-two. And that is off speed. And on the change, Cowden out in front of it. A swing and a miss. And Dixie State gets out of a jam. For BYU in the bottom of the third, it was no runs on three hits. There were no errors, and two were left on. We go to the top of the fourth. BYU and Dixie State, 0-0 on the new skin. BYU Sports Network.